Hi guys, in a previous video, I showed you how to uh, convert a typical Python script uh, into a web API uh, using just Python without any frameworks. And in that previous video, I put the, I'll post the link of that uh, previous video in the description below. We had a very simple function which took in a name and surname and just return the text, uh, you know, hello, whatever the name is, and then how are you? And in this video, we're going to take that a step further. Now, what I have here, we're going to build a more complex uh, web API. Uh, but nevertheless, it still works as, a, as, as, the, as, the, as the previous one, albeit this one is a bit more complex. And let's go into it. The first component of this web API is, and that's the heart of the, or the engine of the whole uh, web API, that is this function. What it does, it calculates the age, it takes in birth date. Birth date, there's a description to this function, which I, I, I made a video to this function like sometime this year, May or June. So, you know, I've got a playlist called age calculators. You'll find it in there. I've done multiple age calculators in multiple languages. And the one on the Python, you'll find that in that playlist, age calculators. Anyways, uh, what this function does, it takes in a dictionary as input, the birth date, and returns then basically the age of the person. Among other things, it also returns a lot of other stuff. What it does, it returns a sort of um, um, a dictionary of all possible outputs that uh, you know somebody might need. Right. So that's that is the function. Now another difference to uh, the previous thing, the previous uh, in the, uh, the what I was what I what was explained in the previous video is in the previous video. We had everything in public. Now, public is the folder which is uh, used by the server to serve pages. So it was in the public folder of the server. The whole the whole web API was placed in the public folder of the server. Now, in this case, we have two different things. The function I just showed you is positioned here, way off the public server. It's somewhere, you know, on some on some drive within that uh, on, on, on some machine and that's that's the file that I'm talking about whereas the public folder the one where all uh, the web pages and all the public scripts are found is here and that's the first difference to the to the previous script so we have here like uh, multiple scripts uh, this whole application is basically um, yeah, distributed over multiple in multiple position. The first position is not the public folder that is here, and that is basically the engine. The engine of the of the whole API is here, and the rest of the API is basically here. This file, and this file is very similar to what we had in our previous video in, in the previous video, and is basically here. Again, it has this thing up here which says which is the path to the to the python executable then what is new is it just adds this path where the engine or basically that that script is found and appends that path to the system path so that's why that then i'm able to import that file or that module if you wish into this current script and i'm importing h calculator as ac i'm just calling it ac for short Right, the rest of the stuff is very similar to what we had in the previous video. In the previous video, we had just two parameters, name and surname. Here we have three, year, month, and day, because our function requires a dictionary, and this dictionary has those three things. That's the documentation of that function, so that's why I have to, you know, go after that. Right. And basically what this file is doing is, let me just finish and then I can say, so that's basically, that's basically very similar to what we had previously. So, and then what I did, I just converted the, uh, 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 sorry, I made a variable as a dictionary and then input those three variables as in here into that dictionary with each, each with a respective key. 
And then what happens is that um, uh, the function is called calculate age with that input birth date. And that is all those variables are created by or are parsed from the query string. And if we're going to test that, that's going to look something like that. There's the um, link with the query. And you see that the query is like in the previous video, like a question mark, then first the year, then the month and the day. And in this case, I put in the year 1988, month 08, day 01. And that is the output of the function. As you see, it's a dictionary with, very, with numerous uh, um, uh, things in that dictionary, numerous keys and values, among others than the age. Of, the, of, that, of that person. Right, so that's basically the whole thing. And just to uh, recap, this is basically the architecture of that API. And here we have the engine placed somewhere in some folder away from the public directory. And in the public directory, in a subfolder called real play, we have the interface to that engine. That is this age API. And that is the one being called, that's the one we're targeting here. Let me just lower these windows a bit. This is the one being called here, age API, with the request. And that age API, then if you go back to the script, parses that input, that query, and then creates a dictionary based on that query. And then what it does, it sends it to the function calculate age to this one here, i.e. the engine placed in some other folder. This function does, it, does its work and then returns this dictionary, which has all the details that we saw previously and as well as the age. And that's basically the output string that we get or output dictionary rather uh, that we get from that function. So that's basically the web API as it works. As you see here, it's a bit more complex than the previous one because now it's distributed into two folders. So that's 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 the one thing. So here, uh, the difference to our previous thing is that we have now here two scripts. Previously, we had everything in one script, in one in one file, uh, the whole thing, and now we have it in two files. And, that's, and that is more... Uh, akin to the to the way real applications are built. You build your application, you build your Python script or your Python program, and it could, it could, could have multiple files and so on. But basically that program is placed somewhere and then in, in the public folder, you'd have then th that interface or API, or, or yeah, interface to that engine, which is the interface to the outer world. So this H API is basically the connection between the outer world, i.e. the query, and that engine. That engine, that here, that engine here, does not have any direct contact to the outer world. It only has a contact to H API, and H API is the uh, Python script which deals with the query strings and parses these, and then puts them in a dictionary, and then and then only and only then would it then send that uh, dictionary to the um, to the uh, to the function itself. And then what we get is here, and the function then would return that string. Okay, so that's that's a, that's a, that's the one thing. And then if we're gonna take it a step further, like uh, in another video that I did, what I, I showed you how you can call your um, web API from another. Uh, application and in that case it was PHP and we can do the same thing here it's very similar so here's a PHP file similar to the one I showed in a, in a previous video where um, again to that other video also the link of that second video is also in the, in the description below so you can basically follow the series from the beginning to, to this stage now and here, what I did in, in contrast to the previous video, we had only two fields, name and surname. And here we have three fields, year, month, and day. And basically what I'm doing here is basically, this is first the HTML, and then I'm just uh, creating new variables in PHP, which um, either take the input of the user, or if there is no input of the user, then they would just be empty. And then that HTML input, uh, that HTML, uh, call a template if you will um, 
th those elements will be then replaced by the values of those variables. Right, and then what it does, here comes the interesting bit, uh, what it does, what this PHP does, then it does call our, um, our web API, and you see here the address is here, age API, pi, and then year, then it takes in the variable input year, a month, it takes in the variable input month, and day, it takes in the variable input day. What it does then uh, with the function file get contents, it contents, uh, it gets then the, you know, whatever our age calculation function spits out, and then basically type it here. And if we check it out, there's the PHP page, and you can notice here, let me go back to the PHP, you see, or let me just reduce that a bit so you can see here. So you see here, if post, what that means is that as long as nothing is posted like this stage right now, let me just reduce that window as well. If nothing is posted right now, this part here is supposed to come down here, but it's not visible right now because we haven't posted anything. As long as soon as I now input something and then you know, press on calculate age, then this segment here will appear down here. So let's put the year, let's put the same year we had the previously 1988 and 08 and 01 and then calculate age. And now I get the string similar to the string here, exactly the same string, but in contrast to this one here, I didn't, you know, this one here, I just created this query manually. What I did here, I had a, I have a more friendly, user-friendly interface where I have some form fields. I input via PHP and PHP through this variable hcalc link creates this um, uh, URL, which we did here manually, and uh, sends that to the API, and the API brings back that stuff. Now everything's working here perfectly. Uh, one, one small gripe I have with this application is that my PHP is not able to parse that output because that output is a Python dictionary converted to a string, because going back to HAPI, um, you can see here what I did is I'm basically printing uh, calculate age and this is basically a dictionary, a Python dictionary converted to a string and not very helpful for uh, my PHP. You know, I, it's very hard for the PHP to get the age out of that now. So one thing I've got to do with my function, I need to modify my function for it to output some sort of text which is readable by another application and we have here JSON is the perfect candidate for that. So what I have here is uh, I've imported JSON already the module JSON. All I've got to do now is basically convert those functions outputs. So let me create a new variable function um, outputs JSON and what I what that is is basically JSON uh, dumps, which basically converts our dictionary, uh, our dictionary function outputs into JSON. Okay, so JSON dumps function outputs, um, and that means this one is now the JSON pendant to function outputs, uh, and then here I just return the function outputs JSON. Right, and we can see now the difference. Uh, these are single quotes. Uh, typical signature of a Python dictionary. If I now just send that query again, then you'll see now we have double quotes. That's the typical signature of JSON. So now we're producing JSON. And uh, the same thing here, if I just calculate age now, I'm getting JSON. So I now, I'm able now with, uh, in PHP, I can basically decode that uh, JSON. And what I do, I'm just going to remove that. So I'm let's uh, yeah let's let's create a new variable. Let's call it um, API output. And API output is JSON decode. That's a PHP function to decode um, PHP. And what we're decoding is basically um, hcalc data, hcalc data, and we are uh, setting that to true, right? So we then have a basically, what we have is then basically an array, which um, where the where the JSON is basically converted. The JSON coming out from Python is basically converted to a PHP array. And uh, if we can test it out, just let me print 
our um, API output and uh, let's send calculate age and you see now I have an array so I basically converted my JSON my, my JSON produced by the Python converted that to an array a PHP array and now I'm easy it's very easy for me to get that age I j I'm just interested in the age I'm not interested in any of the other outputs so it's very interesting for me uh, very easy now for me to g get the age and uh, just say you know like something like that uh, echo uh, uh, let's do a couple of line breaks and then you are and then concatenate the age and the age is basically api <coughs> oops, api output and not the whole thing not the whole array but just output age so right and then after that you are uh, let's say 37 and then uh, years old okay and then semicolon that's it right so that's basically the output that i'm interested in and that's why parsing that's why uh, converting that function to to um, <clears throat> to output json is so important or so helpful because it is easy now for the calling application whatever application that is be it php javascript whatever most programs or all programs that i know of have a sort of a JSON function which is able to convert JSON into some sort of a list or sequence or array or something like that. And then out of that array, you can easily pick the element or elements that you're interested in. That's the way we did here. We get the API output, which is basically an array. And out of that array, I'm just interested in output age. The rest, the rest of the output doesn't really interest me really. And uh, that's it. So I'm saving that. And if I calculate age again, I'm just getting exactly the output that I want. And now here again, like I said in the previous video, it's like for a normal user, a normal user would not possibly, could not possibly discern that there, this is an application containing of two different programs, PHP and Python, and the Python uh, programs, it has it's distributed over two files. So it is uh, from the architecture, uh, quite a complex program, uh, for such a simple task but still uh, this is sort of more uh, in the direction like normal apis are built you'd have the engine or normal web apis are built you have the engine placed somewhere and in the public folder you'd have done some sort of interface between the outer world be it a php script or whatever and that engine and that's the way it is now i can even take that a bit step further because here what it does, it says, uh, whatever your age is, you say you are so many years old. Yeah, it's just one problem. If you're a perfectionist, you'd say, okay, what if the guy is like one year old? You know, then it doesn't look good. So you can add a condition here. If um, convert that uh, output to an int and int val, and then uh, let me copy that. If this output is equal to one then we're gonna copy that now it's gonna be like you're gonna be then just you know one year old else uh, you have the years so this is now this is now a complete thing and if I reduce that it just works the same but obviously I'm, I'm, I now have 2020 so obviously if I uh, keep that at 08 and let's put it like this so um, or like make it 19 make that uh, 11 and let's see zero years and if I make it 18 then I would be one year or something so you see now it, it's perfect and if with 19 is zero years fits as well I obviously if I do it 09 then it's 10 years fits perfectly and if i do it as 18 then it's one year so now with this condition i don't have here one years old so so i hope you learned here how to build a more complex web api which could be which could contain 
multiple multiple Python files distributed in multiple folders. What is what is important is that engine is up to you. That's you gotta know what you know. You gotta know what you want out of the web API. So that engine is basically your thing. But important is this AG, or this sorry this API or this interface to your engine. And this is gonna be probably look similar to the stuff here. What it's gonna do is basically parse the query coming in from the from the web, parse it into diverse elements, and then sort of uh, you know structure these elements in the structure your uh, function or, or whatever needs them, so you're able to call your engine. That's basically what the interface does. And then, uh, yeah, and, and then it obviously prints out the output of that engine. So that interface is gonna be, probably look very similar to this one here. Uh, obviously your engine is gonna be kind of different depending on what kind of uh, task you're trying to solve.